Calix. We got a camera so as you can see out there normally. Yeah, but everything's out. Oh. Yeah, everything went down 100 percent Yeah. I've been away from Cavic for just a little bit here. I was trying to secure the Chena cabin for the future, so I had to leave for a little while, and now I'm on my way back in. Looks like we had some good wind events, but it doesn't look too bad. My satellite dishes are up. Just about 10 days ago, everything in my camp went silent. I haven't been able to ping any of my satellite dishes. There is no electronics. Nothing is giving a signal. It's like Kavik just simply disappeared. Man, I'm not even seeing any animal tracks. That would point more towards human interaction. Every single time, you don't know what hand you're going to get. You may get aces and eights and get the death hand, or you may just get a good one. I'm walking in blind, but not unprepared. I need to do a visual, see if I see any animals or anything out of the ordinary. I see maybe some old track from earlier in the year. I need to get on the inside and make sure my communications come up. It just takes a nanosecond of not being thorough in your toast. did just what they were supposed to do. It's a system that I put in. It's attached to my alternative energy. You get too much power or too little power coming in, it throws the alarm and shuts everything down to protect itself. It protected itself and therefore protected my ass. It makes me feel very good, but it's, it's like when you finally get it right, you start looking over your shoulder to see, all right, what's the catch? The first step is done. I have shelter, I have communications. I can check the rest of camp, maybe even get the power going. On to the next portion. Every year's different. You're always learning something new. The animals change, the weather changes, the snow conditions change. The only thing that doesn't change is change itself. further up the Kiwalik River, where resources are more abundant and where caribou will soon migrate through. The hailstones look to resupply on food and firewood in order to survive in this new location. Are you going to set traps first? No. I'm going to get a bit of firewood first because we need to have firewood and I want to boil my traps. You want to babysit Carol or you want to go follow me or go do your own thing? I can go to some meat for you. That would be cool. Um, Take my 22. Yep. No, I can stay and play with him outside and get some snow and milk for some water. Oh, yeah, he'll have a day with us. Stuff like that. I'm going to go out and go start my machine. Get my Lucky ready. us, yeah. Our work will be clean. 
Man, it's hot out today. Whew. Feels like spring and it's March. It's not right. It's weird. It's supposed to be one of the coldest months, you know? February and March. It's almost so hot out, I wonder why I need a fire. <laughs> and live in the bush. If you don't have intelligence and a lot of drive, you just don't do well. I've never seen the river like this in recent years. You don't see jams like this too often. It's incredible. Yeah. We missed a really kind of an amazing freeze up. I'm back at Calico finally with Denise. I'm still a little bit gimpy from my injury. I'm not 100%. I got to be really careful about how I move around on the ice. I can't afford to take a bad fall on the hip that I just had replaced. So it's really weighing pretty heavy on my mind. The thing that's really going to be tough is getting the dogs back. We got to fix this glare ice around here so that we can get the dogs up onto the hill. So we're going to have we're going to have a lot of work to do. My name's Andy Bassett. I live on the Yukon River at a remote homestead that I've been building for 30 years. 2018 was probably the toughest year I've ever had. Had a really bad hip injury. Spent most of 2018 with my girlfriend Denise recuperating down in Florida. Trying to get myself back in shape so I can live the life I really want to live. My name's Denise Becker. Nothing could prepare you for living at Calico. But I feel very connected to this whole culture that's here. And the icing on the cake is Andy. I've always felt like I was meant to just live in this world alone. It's been a big change for me to realize I went from the lone wolf to wanting to be in the pack. Two people and 13 dogs, but it's a pretty good pack. I'm really worried about getting these dogs home safely. We're really excited about coming back to Calico, but Calico Bluff just isn't the same without the dogs here. When we go get the dogs tomorrow, you see all that glare ice there? Yeah. When the wind blows, it polishes this ice, and so you have no traction whatsoever. It's going to get it really hard to turn them to come up this hill on that glare ice unless we have something for them to grab a hold of. And then the hard part is going to be chopping out all this ice and trying to make some kind of a ramp down so the dogs don't slip and slide coming up that because that's what screws up their shoulders. 
And then the other thing I'm thinking about, if I take a fall on this ship right now, I'm right back to square one again. Most shit going on okay, all this stuff. Lots of food. My dogs have been well taken care of an eagle for the last four and a half months, five months. We're gonna have to spend a lot of time chopping this ice out, prepping it to where we can safely get the dogs up and down the bank into our property. That's me when I fall off of this. The biggest thing that I realized a long time ago living here was you gotta put the work in to make things right. If you try and do a shortcut, you always end up paying the piper. We don't want our dogs to take a fall. Okay? Yeah. And me falling down on my hip to start all over again, another year wasted. So for me to put the work in for a full day, just to make 20 feet of trail, it's a smart thing to do. It'll pay off throughout the whole winter and it'll make things safe. Because if you get hurt out here, it's game over. And so basically what we were doing is we were making a stairway to cross the glare ice so that we could get the dogs some traction. It seems like a lot of crazy, stupid work to have to do right now, but this is you days and days later. I think this is good enough for right now. We'll just see how it goes. Coming out of that snow onto that glare ice is gonna be the worst part. Today was a killer day. We both worked our tails off. It doesn't look like we did a whole lot, but what we did is crucial to getting the dogs home safe. And we'll see if the fruits of our labor paid off in the morning. I sacrificed everything. The dogs see that and they give me more for that because I'm just like them. Trim the dog's nails. Racing dogs is all about dog care. The only thing that's ever going to get you to the finish line before anybody else is how your dogs care about you and how you care about them. So it starts right here in the dog yard. Yeah, I did a rod right around the corner. It's very important that I get out there and simulate the race, simulate the training, get in one last really solid camping training run with the dogs. Roomba! This right here is Roomba. This is the dog that led me to the seventh place finish in the Iditarod last year. Nothing happens, you know, around here without a lot of preparation. Earlier this winter, I went out and I drug a trail all the way to the Hootland and Hot Springs. What I'm doing is like a mock run of the Iditarod. It's gonna be 270 miles as opposed to 1,000 miles, but kind of gives you a really good mindset of what it's gonna take. Which dogs are gonna shine. Is one of my leaders, Alfie. Doing a lot of things different this year. Last year was my first Iditarod run, and I was pretty much in the dark about what it was gonna take, and I'm ready to implement many improvements. All right, I got all my dogs' nails trimmed. It's all about the preparation, and that's what makes for a successful trip. You ready, boys? Yeah. You ready to go tomorrow? Yeah, I am. I know you are. I'm ready too. You're ready too, buddy. Yeah. Next thing I'm gonna do is fire up my meat cutting room. This is one of the most important pieces of equipment that I have. This thing's literally 70 years old. Hoping to do real well in the Iditarod this year and be able to buy myself a brand new meat saw and not have to worry about this thing breaking down on me. Doing well in the Iditarod offers a ton of opportunities for me to improve my lifestyle. So far, so good. So far, so good. This lever is completely wearing out. Not holding. 
see if we can make this thing work. And I need to put some kind of tension that's going to hold this. I have a ratchet strap. Not sure if it's going to work, but see if I can get it wrapped around it in some way. If I could get it to work, help me hold the tension. It's working, it's pulling it down. And that should hold it, actually. I think I might have found the solution to my problem here. Use a little, little bit of ingenuity. This ratchet strap is helping hold this down because these teeth are all worn out and it keeps popping loose. So with this on here nice and tight, I'm hoping it'll hold the whole thing at the right tension. So I'm gonna fire this up and see if it holds. Looks like it's running a lot better right now. True test is how it cuts the meat, so. just really is no room for complacency. Complacency is going to bite you in the ass when you're least looking. So far, I have communications. I've got the heater going. It's starting to warm up. So the next step for me, I have to get into the Twinkie. The last time I was here, the Wolverine had made a home underneath the Twinkie. I boarded it up, shoot him off, but I need to see what's going on now. I'm gonna take Betsy out, just in case there's something lingering. And then a few fox prints, I don't see much that way. I see a lot of snow here. The weather in Alaska, for a few years has been up and down but this winter the warm-up was sustained and severe and now i don't know what to expect we gave the rest of the united states our winter and we became the bahamas the problem is when we're ready to strip down and get a suntan other things are ready to get out of bed Ooh, got a few little foxy prints so as i'm coming in I have to be on the ball with every move that I make. All right. The moment of truth. Get my little headlamp back on. Go in. Okay. It's on. A couple of well-placed knocks. If anything's in there, I'll hear it scrabble. Anything looks pretty good. Welcome home, little bear. Everything looks actually pretty good, messy, but that's the way I left it. If I turn off the light. Daylight will show up if the tent's been compromised, and it's certainly not. I'll get the heat on in here later. Right now, I want to keep going and get the generator on. The storm is coming in, the wind is coming in, and I've got to keep going on my chores. So, welcome home, Twinkie, but I got work to do. I just love this life. I grew up doing this, and I'm going to continue doing this for the rest of my life. smell but why take a chance when you don't have to you know i'm very happy that i get to go out and hunt by myself but it's a lot of responsibility lots of tracks 
hope I'm helping my dad getting him some bait and also getting some food for my family to eat too. So when I'm hunting rabbits, I usually just look for a dark eye. Their eyes should be real dark. The rest of their body just blends in with the snow. So right now I'm just looking for eyes. <laughs> One black eyeball. Rabbit hunting is just something you do by yourself most of the time. So it's usually the first things you learn to hunt when you're a kid. Just a little rabbit or a ptarmigan. Maybe a bunny somewhere. Every time I go out with a gun, I rarely get to see bunnies, but when I leave my gun at home, man, I see tons of them, of all kinds of animals. They just spread the word, you got a gun. I just Sometimes it could be frustrating <laughs> right next to it. But you just gotta think there's more rabbits out there and um, this isn't the only one, so just get up and keep walking and even though it's pretty tough, you don't wanna just give up and go home. You don't wanna just tell your parents you give up. No blood. No rabbit. I don't wanna um, wound one. That's bad luck for hunting if you wound one and leave it. They say you won't catch for the next couple of years. There's one right there.
absolutely never know what you have inside you until you take it to the limit where you think you have nothing and you find you got more. I got my sled all packed up. Yesterday I was able to do all my preparation for this trip. I had to get my dog's toenails trimmed, check out their feet. I was able to cut a lot of meat. Time to get it going good while I got a lot of daylight. We're heading out on a great adventure to the Hootlanta Hot Springs. I thought that'd be a great destination for training run to simulate the Iditarod. It's a long ways up there. I'm gonna have hot water and a great peaceful place for me and the dogs to go camp at. All right, ready? Let's go. Oh. Easy. This is basically simulating a quarter of the Iditarod. And then I gotta times that times four, and that helps me have all the calculations that I need to prepare for the race. One thing I know about the Iditarod after running it last year, you're gonna think about it for the rest of the year. You're gonna think about all the mistakes you made. I don't wanna have things haunting me that I could have done better. Proper preparation makes for not having to go back and think, oh man, I should have done this. I wish I had done that. But I've been reliving that all year. Good dog. Nice and easy. And all those things I relived all year, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna exercise doing them better. And the only way to do that is to get out on the trail and do it. Go out there and live it. Easy. Go. 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 All right, I found a little spot right here off the trail. Stop the dogs for the night. Just like I'll do in the I did a rod. One of my best mentors in dog mushing told me the race is won in the training, not in the race. <laughs> Get him fed. Maybe have a little snack myself. I've only been at this camp and talk for about 10 minutes and I'm almost done. And that's very important to have that kind of routine. Because when I'm six days into the race, I'm going to have very little sleep. But I can always trust that routine. All right. Let them calm down and rest. This is a great simulation. Everything I'm seeing right now gives me uh, nothing but the highest hopes that we're ready, we're prepared. We're just putting that final sharpening on the edge of our knife. Sled dogs love to run, like sugar into frosting. It's just meant to be. If you can't let a sled dog run, they have no purpose in life. Oh, there's still snow there. Oh, it looks good. It's stuck. So let's go get some dogs. So Denise and I, we spent pretty much a full day chiseling the ice, carving steps into it, freezing those in to make the best possible trail we could going up that hill so we'd have it all winter long. The big challenge of today is to get the Eagle, hook 13 dogs up to a snow machine that haven't been run for most of the year, travel down a very icy Yukon River and get back down to Calico Bluff. So it's gonna be a very full day. There's going to be some real ups meeting the dogs, and there's going to be some real challenges making sure that we pace the dogs so that nobody gets hurt on the way home. Come on. So excited to see these guys. One of the biggest things on my mind while I was away down in Florida was not having my dogs around. <laughs> Dogs mean everything to me. They're like my family. They are my family. And I really miss them a lot. Why? Why? Why, Daddy? Why, Daddy? Walking into the dog lot 
the energy just consumes you immediately. Yeah, good man. You want me to be lead dogs take us home? Yeah, okay, we'll do that. They see signs that they're leaving, they go crazy. Yeah. Great way to be reunited. Just be involved by my dogs. Get it out of your system, you know? Mauling sounds like a bad thing, but when it's a dog you love, it's a good thing. Alright, now that you rolled me around in your I think the real energy there was the fact that they hadn't run as a team Boy. for over a year now. Okay. And that's what they love to do. Okay, let's go! dogs they were really well taken care of by some friends of hers but they didn't have enough time to run my dogs and so we have to really think about their safety let's go good boy one thing i don't want to do is hurt them on the trip home come on Tom, get on the trail girl We have one dog that's an old dog. Dickel's 14 years old now. Yay, Dickel's not going to be in harness. He's going to follow behind us because I could see he's a year older and a lot stiffer. His hips were a little bit gimped up. And I could feel for him because my hips are a little bit gimped up. But he's having trouble in the deeper stuff. I expect when I start getting pretty close to the Calico Bluff, the pace is going to pick up. And then we hit glare ice. We gotta really slow it down. Getting all the dogs out onto the ice, they're just doing amazingly well. Looking good, you guys, looking good. Good boys. But I cannot help but think about what's coming ahead. Glare ice is a killer for sled dogs. There's no traction, nothing to pull against, and it's real easy to get hurt. Let's go, Dicko! Oh, no. Let's go, Dicko! Oh, no. Come on, Dicko, stay on the trail. Is it good? It's good. Attaboy, Dicko. Good morning, Dicko. Come on, come on. Hop, hop. Hop, hop. Good boys. Hitting the glare ice was the breath-holding moment for me. Yeah. I was just so concerned about the dogs hurting themselves, but they were all in sync as a team. They went over that glare ice really without a hitch. Doing good, Carl. They came up to that corner and they were up and over and all our concerns and fears for them were behind us. Woohoo! Yay! Well, Calico Bluff is my life. And I've dedicated the better part of my adult life creating this world for myself. Every time I leave it, it reaffirms that I should be here, that I don't belong out in the rest of the world. <laughs> oh, I think they're a little happy to be home. <laughs> Coming back and having my whole family with me, I'm really thankful for that. And then you yeah, add on top of that that I found a partner who thinks the same way. He's been away a long time for this wants to work the same way <laughs> and share those same kind of experiences it doesn't get any better than that i got all my family right here it's a really good rich life we enjoy ourselves a lot my wife and me just know this life to where this is what we do for a living few rabbits and uh rabbits make good bait so i'm gonna take the scraps the guts the skin the heads and i'm gonna use those for trapping me i got everything i need the buckets traps and a wonderful day ahead basically what i'm gonna do from here is i'm gonna trap from here down river so we can go between the summer camp and here with the least amount of gas and with the maximum amount of everything we're looking for which is firewood poles and fur you choose a good trapping spot by seeing the amount of tracks that are there. It could be a lot of rabbit tracks. It could be a place that's visual, like maybe a high mound that animals are attracted to. But where I'm going to be doing this is mostly right where creeks are, 
where willow breaks are and on the bends of rivers. And that's where the animals frequent. I can make a nice visual right here with a bunch of dirt scraped out like an animal's been uh, going at it. And perhaps you can use the side of the creek right here. I'm gonna set a few bucket sets with some uh, pond bear traps. These things scare me to death. They can ruin your day and break your hand. If things wanted to go wrong, and they often do, then Mr. Murphy's in charge of the law, and I ain't talking to a probation officer, then uh, it can go bad. Snap your fingers, you know? They have due respect for the trap, it's true. It's like a chainsaw or uh, the ocean. You can do a lot with that stuff, but man, it can do you too. I think this set will call for some guts. Tosser, stomach and intestines. And maybe out here, you can just shred some of the I'm trying to give the impression that something's been killed here. Make it irresistible. Safety's off. Okay. And then we leave and do it again. Trapping is a way to be hunting 24-7. That's basically what they're doing for you. They're hunting for you. It's like setting a net for fish instead of casting. So what I'm looking forward to is being able to set some traps and go check the traps intermittently every day, every other day. <laughs> this might work. Fox tracks. You never know what you're going to get in a trap freaking bunny rabbit could come over here and jump in the damn thing you never know but what i'd like to see is like fox maybe lynx wolverine but you know i, I don't really get a choice one time i got a squirrel that was eating on a dead rabbit it's kind of strange throw that in there you see a little bit of fur and just advertise so say you want to sell something advertise 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 right a trap because my daughters and my wife can uh, take the furs, they can make customary and traditional stuff and sell it for cash money to buy the things that we need for cash money, like gasoline and maybe bullets, stuff like that. These are natural resources, and the resources are out there for us to get and to utilize. And there's an abundance of resources here and very, very few people. And it's a good living, and it's, uh, it's fun. Okay. On to the next one. Once I got the traps in, then I can go do other things. Hunt caribou, go up in the mountains, and start making a wider living out of here. So I get to check my traps as I start to do the other work I came here for. And in a way, I'm still hunting, no matter what I do. Can I admit that maybe I get paranoid? Absolutely. But the one time something your world up, you're gonna be more careful. for me are ticking down to when I have clients wanting to come in. What I need to do right now is just continue with the process of opening camp and making sure things are up and running. This is an interesting reprieve and it's been a milder winter in some ways, but it is not over yet. I am scheduled to get 20 feet, tons of snow. So I've got to get the generator going because I'm not just calling the electric company and saying flip that switch. I've got to flip it myself, and it doesn't always work when I want it to. It's always walking into the unknown when I come home. There's some wolf down that way. You got an old, old fox print here. I don't see much else, but I have to go inside, ready for business. So, into the unknown, man. Who's been sleeping in my bed? I got some tracks here. Little ermine, some little mousies. Doesn't look like any of my equipment moved. I can tell I've got snow coming in on this side of the building. So I definitely had some southern wind. This is my gen. It's just how I left it. I hope the generator starts okay. I hope there's nothing wrong with it. It all looks good, but, and you sweat it each time. You sweat it. 
Back to work, though. Get that zen flowing. Come on, 20KW, let's do our job. Okay. So, I'm gonna flick this over. It should start itself. If it doesn't, it'll scream at me and tell me why. Pause crossed. Warm up, warm up. Come on. It's still warming up, warming up, warming up. Come on. That was pretty freaking smooth. Why am I shocked that I'm finally, after 20 years, doing a good job? Okay, I'm going to put this breaker on. That'll send the power to my transfer. All that looks good. Once I flip this switch, the light should come on. Come on, baby, do your job. <laughs> Purrs like a kitten. Electricity is on. Welcome to Cavic River Camp, man. I'm open. You gotta work so hard out here, you gotta be efficient to be effective. ourselves into what we are right now and we're a force to be reckoned with the way I see it. Work's done. 
can't really affect the outcome other than showing up to the race well rested and uh, ready for war. I look forward to sacrificing everything I got in me for those dogs. And I look forward to coming across that feral dark no matter what place we're in. Born here, raised here, still here. Still loving this area. It's awesome. of drinking water coming out. Pretty awesome that I could go out and go rabbit hunting and my dad could go out and set his traps. And while my dad's doing that, my mom's setting up the tent and watching the boy. And at the end of the day, everything just comes together. I'm real proud of Carolyn every time she comes back with the catch, because even the best hunters sometimes come back with nothing. It makes me proud to see that she's successful. Especially when you have your grandchildren following right next. Was your sled? Yeah. You know they're gonna do the same thing in a few years, right as soon as they're able to carry that rifle or walk through the deep snow. So I try my best to pass on the things I know. We teach them to be comfortable out here, fun. It's my place to always be teaching. I am an aunt, I am an Anna. But it's very important that they have fun. Because if they have fun, they remember it much easier. Wipe out! Wiling are all big. You have fun with? <laughs> Hello, xin chào các bạn nhé. Đây là cây nhót nhà mình ạ. À. Cây rất là to. Nó lam rất là rộng rồi các bạn ạ. Cây này phải đến Tết mới có quả các bạn nhé. Đến Tết là có quả ăn được. Tết là ăn cút non đấy ạ. Các bạn hay thường ăn quất nhốt non quận với cả lá, lá rau cải ấy. Rồi chấm cái nước chấm của nó ăn rất là ngon Nhà mình có hai cây Nhưng mà nó lan rộng tận ra đằng kia các bạn ạ Năm nay là năm thứ ba rồi Năm nay là nó rất là to Lan rất là rộng Ra quả thì sai lắm ạ Hầu như cành nào ngóc mép nào cũng có quả luôn <cười>